Ali Velshi, who's honestly one of the very rare, decent voices in mainstream media, he did a segment covering Trump's alleged peace deal between the UAE and Israel. So they'll be normalizing relations. But, um, you know, pretty important group is kind of left out of this deal. So let's see what he has to say. Israel and the United Arab Emirates came to a deal to normalize relations between those countries, establish full diplomatic relations, and stop the further annexation of the West Bank by Israel. However, the historic agreement has left much of the Arab world divided, as the deal seemed to have largely erased the Palestinian cause from the narrative. To make matters worse, the deal comes amid a renewed blockade on fuel and escalating tensions between Israel and Gaza. Now, the Gaza Strip is literally a tiny strip of land that is considered to be the most densely populated area in the world. I traveled to Gaza last October and witnessed those struggles firsthand. Those who live in Gaza are in constant uh, blockade by the Israeli government. No food, no aid, no energy, uh, or even movement in and out of the country can come without approval. And yet there was no mention of this in the New Deal. In fact, Israel is blocking uh, the little fuel that Gaza does get from going in, which Gazans depend upon for their electricity. Back in 2019, I spoke to a young woman in Gaza about the difficulties of living with power only a few hours a day. People since, well, Gaza since 2006 has been suffering from um, electrical crisis. Um, we enjoy only like three to six hours of electricity a day. So I'm, I'm sarcastic by saying enjoying. Israel is also further limited in already puny fishing area in the Mediterranean. Fishing is a major part of the Palestinian economy. This fisherman was shot in the eye by an Israeli patrol who said he was fishing outside the allowed boundaries. He claims he was nowhere close. Stopping the annexation of the West Bank, another part of the Palestinian state, was part of the deal, but doesn't actually mean much. Nearly 600,000 Israeli settlers already live in the area, many under false pretenses, created by and enforced by the Israeli military, despite the occupation of Palestine by Israel being uh, clearly against international law. So what is this deal really achieving? As with most things in the Middle East, nothing is cut and dry. So for a deeper look, I'm joined by my uh, colleague, NBC foreign correspondent, Matt Bradley. Matt? Yeah, Ali, you know, what this deal achieves, it actually does, we, it cannot be diminished. It achieves quite a lot. And this is going to contribute undoubtedly towards peace and stability in the region. That having been said, everything that you mentioned about the Palestinians is absolutely correct. And, you know, you can even see it, Ali, if you look at the formal statement that was issued by the United Arab Emirates just a couple of days ago, they mentioned the Palestinians once in the very end of their statement. The rest of it is laudatory about the role of the U.S. and Israel. And that's why there's just so much anger in the region about this. But again, I should state, for almost the entire diplomatic community, the world over, this is seen as a great new development. But for the Palestinians themselves, they see this as a betrayal by the UAE. And other people in their camp also see it that way. we got to remember, Ali, like you were saying, you know, this is going to uh, basically stop the idea that Benjamin Netanyahu might annex as much as a third of the West Bank. But it's a suspension. And Benjamin Netanyahu has made it very clear in repeated comments ever since this deal became public that he intends to fully annex the West Bank in the same way that he had proposed before, that 30 percent of the West Bank. And this is what he considers to be just a delay. And it's also, you know, Ali, another example of Benjamin Netanyahu kind of pulling from other world leaders' tr uh, playbooks and basically creating this problem where he threatened to annex the, a lot of the West Bank and then takes credit for solving the problem. So this is that's why a lot of Palestinians, a lot of people in the Arab world are calling this little more than blackmail. What was done here was just di uh, just basically averting a disaster that was of Israel's own making, that annexation of the West Bank, which, again, was just suspended. It hasn't been all out canceled. And we've already been hearing from other groups like Iran and Turkey. They're furious about this because they consider themselves to be fully in the Palestinian camp. They are the Palestinians champion, both in the region and the world. And from what they can tell, this is not a good deal for the Palestinians because they aren't mentioned at all. Ali? So they were touting this as if it was some, you know, brilliant diplomatic breakthrough. And um, the fact of the matter is, the group in the region which most desperately needs a peace deal and needs justice is totally left out. Totally left out.
And originally they were reporting that like, there will be no more expansion by Israel into the occupied territories. They're not going to do any more illegal settlements. It's going to be wonderful. And then immediately as, as those articles came out, um, ne the Netanyahu government was like, that's, that's not true at all. We didn't say that at all. So we're not, we're, we're suspending expansion temporarily. We're not canceling expansion. So what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? You know what this is? This is a publicity stunt in a desperate attempt to try to notch some victories for Trump so that Trump has a better chance in the election because they all want Trump to get reelected because Trump does whatever Israel wants. Trump does whatever Saudi Arabia wants, whatever the Gulf states want. So they know, okay, in the case of Israel, well, we got to keep those subsidies flowing. So, and we got to keep these weapons deals flowing. So let's do whatever we can to try to help them out. So let's do, make up this, uh, this peace deal and act like it's some sort of giant breakthrough when it's not. The Palestinians got screwed. You know, they're, they're left on the side, ignored, and they'll continue to be oppressed. So it, like, it's painfully easy to trick the media these days. Credit to Ali Velshu for doing a good segment, but he's like the only one who does a good segment. Again, you go read the initial reports and they acted like this was some sort of amazing breakthrough deal. It's, it's incredible. You have no idea. We were finally getting peace in the Middle East. Kind of, sort of, not really. Actually, not at all because the Palestinians are still getting screwed. <sighs> so this is Trump going full marketing mode. Where now we can pretend like I got amazing, amazing peace deal. It's an incredible peace deal. It's really great. It's totally wonderful. It's, it's totally out of this world. I love it. It's so great. And I expect more of these tricks moving forward where Trump can try to notch some fake victories to have something to, you know, argue with Biden about where he acts like, oh, yeah, well, I got peace in the Middle East. What did you do, basement man?